Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today is a real treat. And you're thinking, what is it that we have? I'm with Terry Larson. We're in the Hi. suburbs of Phoenix. And Terry, with that being said, um, how many of these cars are still out there? 48. 48 of these cars. And you've raced this car how many times? I've raced it over 100 times over the last, well, <laughs> since 1987. So you've taken this, which is a race car, and you've raced it, but most yeah. people don't race these cars. How many do you think are still racing in the circuits? Uh, not very many in the U.S. There's a few in Europe, but uh, maybe one or two tell in them the what, U.S. Tell them what we're going to be looking at. It's a 1952 Jaguar C-Type XKC017. <laughs> Let me go right to the featured attraction. So with that being said, this is one curvy, beautiful race car. And you have to put this in the perspective. This is all a hand aluminum built car. To make it, how do they make it that smooth when you're banging on it aluminum? It takes a little work. That's it takes amazing. takes a little work and time. But the C-Type uh, ran at Le Mans 1951 and 1953. In 1951, uh, they won by over 88 miles ahead of the second place car. 88 and miles? 88 miles. It was a purpose-built car for Le Mans. Wow. 1953, they won again, and they were the first car to race at Le Mans with disc brakes and an aircraft fuel bag. Wow. And this is the real deal. And you'll see that. Terry asked, he said, should we clean it up, Lou? I said, no, leave the bugs. The bugs are fantastic. <laughs> so let's take a look. Each side's a little different. This side has the exhaust. And uh, we photograph this side because I really enjoy the exhaust coming out the side. This is side pipes well before the Corvettes thought of it. Yep, long before. And we've got disc brakes in the front as you shared. Yeah. 1953 they fit the disc brakes so this car would not have had them when it left the factory but it was fit with them later and true knockoffs clearly yeah and with that being said the, now the wire wheels why the wire wheels on a race car is it just purely a style piece or is it uh i would think they would almost have a solid well, magnet you get, you get better air cooling okay all right there we go and a little bit of style too and look at the look at the exhaust and you can see the aluminum in the back as well. Now, Terry, tell me about these scoops, because you were sharing the C-types don't have these, but we're going to show a picture here in a second. Who, how did this scoop come on for the airplane? They were fit by the owner in 1955, mm -hmm. 54, 55, to help the cooling of the rear brakes. And it really looks good. I mean, it's 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 well done. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look all the way. Very well done. Yeah. And they do serve a purpose. And they identify the car, so when you look through old per period photos, you can tell which car it is because it's the only one that had them. So that makes it kind of fun when you see a picture. You very quickly look for those yeah. air scoops. Let, let's show just that. And we've got this book here specifically positioned. I'll have you grab that. Yep. Show the front just real quick. This is the Jaguar C-Type, D-Type, lightweight E-Type registry. There's Terry's name. And there's some cars. Let's show the picture of this car. So there it is with the scoops. Yep, that's a 1955. That's Salinas. 1955. And there's another picture I really enjoy. Yep, that's <laughs> Sacramento. Look at, look at this one. Up on the hay bales. Yeah. Now, now you've never done that when you're racing. No, I try and avoid that. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. He clipped the hay bales, went up. He was able to steer into it and uh, came in third in the race. And you can see that he's holding on. Oh yeah, sure. So he doesn't fall out of the seat because he had no seat belt. <laughs> That's correct. That was real That's racing. Great. All right, let's put that back. I do want to show something back on this side. Is is this all the way open too? Is that a or, or is it a, a bodied? Uh, can you open that for just a second? Sure. Right now, there's a fuel cell. Sure. There. All right. There we go. That's. That's awesome. Terry, we've got this out here for a purpose. What do we have here? Oh, that's just a nice old tool roll. Uh, From the well car. patinaed, original old tool roll. That is great. You have that with your, with your C-type. Yeah. And I want to feature something 
Notice that strap right there. We're going to be using that in a second. Let's open the uh, passenger door for a moment, please. Yeah, it's got a leather door pull lanyard. So you pull that leather strap, like so, and then this moves in and out. The spark plugs there are for a purpose. Right. Spare set of spark plugs. That's how it was back in the day. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the body. Now the fire system I added. Okay. You kind of need that for racing. Mm -hmm. Now is all of this, uh, It's I don't want to call it carpet. It, it, it has it's a... It's Hardura. It's called Hardura. And it's the original type material. Okay. Tell me about the tack, why it's angled that way. The reason I position it like that is when uh, you're racing, um, the tracks are generally uh, counterclockwise, and you are looking over the bonnet for the apex, and that's the closest to be able to view the tack. You want red line up at the top so it's easier to see. You got it. You don't have to take your eyes as far off. Let's, uh, let's unleash her, shall we? Okay. So it's so interesting how they have the leather back then as the uh, straps. Yeah, it was just a safety. If the bonnet latches failed and you rolled, kept the bonnet in position instead of flopping all over. Look at this. Terry, let's beep that horn for just a minute because I will forget it. And when the car is starting, you won't be able to hear that horn or barely hear the horn. Nice. Yeah, you got your 45 DCO3 Webers. And Terry, you work on these cars. I mean, yeah. that, that was your profession. You were a mechanic and you started to become very well known for working on C types and D types and became kind of the guy the go-to guy when you have that. So your customers are literally from all over the world. Yeah, I've been doing this my whole life. Let me show the other side. Here's the exhaust side, obviously. And you shared with me the original engine was blown up out of this one. Yeah, it, uh, I was told by somebody that was in a building across the street when it was uh, dynoed at full load, it, it exploded. So I expect it doesn't exist. That was when the car was just three years old. And share with it me was what, raced real heavily in its early life. Share with me what that is. That's a dipstick. That's the dipstick for the engine. I yep. had actually it's thought it was like for the, the engine oil. Yeah. Look at that. Here's the all important details. Tell me what we're seeing here. Obviously the uh, XKC017 is the, the body. Chassis, the that's chassis. a chassis number, and then you have the body number, oh, gearbox sorry. number, and uh, and the engine number, along with the uh, engine uh, valve clearance specs on the bottom. That is, that is great. And the body tag. Body the body tag is separate down below. Which is here. There's a tag on the bonnet, the tub, and the tail section. Okay, and there's that one. Here's this. Is there a, a tag here? Is this the correct tag? Yes. Okay, and yeah. then as on you the mentioned tail section it, too. I can see. Well, if I can't get it correctly, I'll make sure I get that. Right there. Now, this one on the bonnet says spare number five. Mm -hmm. um, that's what they did when they replaced the bonnet. This car crashed at Pebble Beach when it was new, and uh, they replaced the bonnet. So when the factory replaced the bonnet, that's what they did. They stamped it. This was the fifth spare bonnet. The fifth spare bonnet. Let's just show that open, too, because that's beautiful. Ah, a car you could just take your time and enjoy. Such a treat. Okay. Terry, is it possible to start it while this is open so we could see the engine in action? Yeah. Okay.
Ah, uh, put the kids to sleep with that sound. That is awesome. Actually, it's funny you mention that because uh, Leon Mandel was editor of Auto Week, owned this at one time, and Dutch, his son, liked the sound of it when he was a baby, and his mother would take him for a ride through the mountainside to put him to sleep. He had trouble sleeping. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I let Dutch and Leon drive it in the Copper State one year. There we go. That's, it. That's the beautiful thing is to share the cars. Yeah. Tell me, is there anything I missed up here in the suspension? This is, this is all like aircraft built. I mean, look at the tubing. It's a complete tube frame chassis, but unlike the D-Type, it's a, it's a solid tube frame chassis from front to back. In the D-Types, it uh, attaches to the tub. Okay. Whereas this car, you actually could take the body off and still drive it around. Let's uh, shut the bonnet one more time, and I'll let people take in one more look. Okay. Kind of take it all in. Absolutely gorgeous. Terry Starin next to your wonderful machine. Terry, really a pleasure. Always a treat to come on out to see your place. Thanks for being on my car story. My pleasure. Thank you.